Hello, hello, hello. Um, this has been requested before, but some, I know, stalker type keeps typing it in the comments the last few days. I want a Peter Gabriel primer. I want a Peter Gabriel primer. I want a Peter Gabriel primer. Well, guess what? You got a fucking Peter Gabriel primer, you dumb fuck. Are you ready? Pin your lug holes back. I ain't repeating this. Peter Gabriel 1. It's the first album. Some people like it. I feel it's let down by its production. Bob Ezrin's production is overblown and tires my ears. Standout tracks. More about the Burgermeister. Salisbury Hill. That's it. Here comes the flood. It's awful. Worst version ever. Um... I don't know if you've seen these ones. These are the these are from 2002. I don't know if these are limited edition or anything, but they come with nice little little do here, yeah, little doickies. Good that. Pig Gabriel 2, produced by Mr. Fripp. I've got a lot of time for this album because it sees Gabriel having to you know work fast because Fripp likes fast working. Uh, on the air DIY standout tracks love those two mother of violence it's a an acoustic ballad you don't hear Gable do much of this it's great uh, white shadow fantastic guitar solo for Mr. Fripp exposure of course and ah, it's just a great record I really like it a lot of people don't but hey they're wrong I'm right that's why you subscribe uh, Peter Gabriel 3 now this is the Oh, well, what would you call? this is the popular one. This is the this is the like the breakthrough from him over here, uh, because it has Games Without Frontiers on it. But when he presented it to Atlantic Records, they said, "Pete, we think you might need uh, you know some sort of psychiatric help." They thought he was on the verge of a mental breakdown. Stupid, but um, yeah, it's a great record. Um, you hear a change in like production because they're using gated reverb on the drums. Phil Collins guests on here, Intruder. It's that sound. It's a great sound. Uh, no self control. Start. I used to love that one. Family snapshot is the most appalling piece of shit ever. Um, and through the wire, you know, it's only got that bloke from the jam on it. Yeah, it has Paul Weller's on it. Can you believe that? Uh, of course, Games Without the Frontiers. Don't know why they re-edited the video and got rid of all the children. That's what made the video in the old days. Um, and one of my favourites, Lead a Normal Life. Biko, I've heard it so many times, it's worn me down. But a great record. Uh, Peter Gabriel 4. The one that people tend to forget, I think. Um, it's got some really interesting stuff. Rhythm of the Heat, San Jacinto. I have the touch, a great song. Family in the fishing net, all about getting married. Oh, shock the monkey. The dwarves, the dwarves in shock the monkey, yeah? Have you got a dwarf fetish like me? I love them dwarves. I love dwarves. Right, Davis, please, you know, come do a guest spot on my channel. Um, Wallflower and the amazing kiss of life. Again, this is a record I've got a lot of time for. Um... What I like about it is it's it's fairly short. It comes and goes, but there are a lot of hits. There's a lot of like you know, standout parts on it. So that's all rather good. Then you have uh, Peter Gabriel live, the highlights, which is uh, yeah. I mean it's it's all right. Um, it's a live album. It's his first live album. Lots of overdubs on it. But why have that when he says reaching to his pile? Whoa! You can have. Peter Gabriel plays live the full edition, which is the double CD version, which is the one that you want. It's got everything on it. Uh, oops! Oh my god! CDs fall out. There should be a little. Yeah, there should be. There is a little. Look! Look what I found inside. Look, a little Salisbury Hill CD single there. Look at that. Who had that in there, eh? I did. But that's the one you want. Um, but I don't think you can get that now. It's hard to find. But hey, that's tough. Um, soundtrack album, Birdie. Now this is interesting. Birdie's a great film. Alan Parker. Um, it's a great movie. Um, what can I say? You really should check it out. Um, the soundtrack is what makes it as well. Uh, Gabriel recycled a lot of his old, like, beds, musical beds, and he reuses, reuses it in here. Like, uh, Birdie's flight is from not from not one of us. Uh, the heat is from Rhythm of the Heat. You know, he reuses a lot of stuff, and it's his first pairing with um, uh, Daniel Lanois, I believe. 
So, so it's, it's an interesting one. I, again, I've got a lot of time for it, but again, I think sometimes it's forgotten because um, it's a soundtrack record. And then it's the big one. Yes, it's So. Um, what can I say? It, so is a very important album to me. Um, I remember getting it at the time, and it just, just it's just a great record. But, but, but you don't want that. <laughs> you want this motherfucker. That's what you want. And it, it's, it's out there in the list somewhere if you want to see me opening this and reviewing it. Oh man, this has kept me. Oh, 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 oh. this has kept me satisfied. This is really good. Um, but yeah, So is a great record. It's got all the hits on it. Sledgehammer. I know some of you might be um, are fed up with it by now, but I'm not. It's a, it certainly is a, is a great recording. Uh, Red Rain. Oh, big time. Uh, we do what we're told. This is a picture with Laurie Anderson. A nice little track there. I used to like it when it ended the album, but then they re they restructured it with the, the new CD length. And they put it in the second from last. And they finished down with In Your Eyes, which is good fun. Passion. Again, it's another soundtrack album. Um, uh, Martin Scorsese's Passion. Is it Temptation of Christ? I need to say Passion of the Christ. That's the wrong film. Uh, last Temptation of Christ with Willem Dafoe in, before he was the Green Goblin. Um, a great film and an equally great soundtrack. Um, not for everyone because it's kind of ethnic and you know, but it, it's it does transport you away. I think you need to see the film to get the soundtrack if you know what I mean. Uh, not for everyone, but check out Passion Sources as well, which I can't seem to find my my copy of anywhere. Uh, I've got it somewhere, but that's a good one as well. Uh, Shaking the Tree, which is a compilation album. It's a compilation album. It's got all the hits, but you you want hit, which I which I think the missus got in her car. Uh, but hit, that's the one you want hit because it's got all the hits on. Um, ah, oh, Us. I love this record. For me, this is probably my favourite Peter Gabler album ever. Come Talk To Me, Love To Be Loved. Oh, Who doesn't love to be loved? Uh, Blood Of Eden, Steam. Steam I'm not too keen on because it's Sledgehammer Part 2. Only Us, Washing The Water. And of course, Secret World with that fucking great bass line from Tony Levin. I love that record. Um... Well, then we have a long gap. Now, we don't have a long gap because he does some other stuff, but we're talking about his solo albums. I'm kind of jumping all over the place. But he does um, Up. Thankfully, some of us can still get it up. Um, bit of a disappointment when it came out because of the, the length of time. Darkness, Growing Up's good fun. Sky Blue. Oh, oh. Blind Boys of Alabama. Oh, oh, oh. Love that bit. Um, Barry Williams shows a pile of crap. Uh, signal to noise. I don't know. I preferred it when Nusrat sang live on it. it back in the late nineties. Can you believe that? They did a version. Did they do a version? They did a live version of that. Or am I? Or am I? Or am I just remembering that they had tapes of Nusrat singing live to it in the late nineties? Because again, these songs were around for a long time, and he was performing them for a long time before he released the record. Uh, but of course, what you want is the SACD version, which has the surround sound mix, which is hard to get. Uh, surround sound mix is quite zippy um, yeah uh, right now we're into the kind of miscellaneous the miscellaneous yeah uh, plus from us uh, it's the companion album to, to us which is really good and worth checking out um, I know it's not strictly a Peter Gabriel album but I think it's worth if your education you've got Tony Levin here doing a great track called Lone Bear Peter Hamill uh, David Rhodes does Down by the River which is a great song he released it on his album bittersweet but this is the better version um shanko's on it daniel lenoir of course brian eno alex gifford oh great record worth checking out but i digress a long time ago we had the millennium dome who remembers the millennium millennium eve yeah i was working on millennium day oh yeah i'll, I'll keep spinning that story out until you get bored with it but uh, mr gabriel did the music for the Millennium Dome and all the acrobats who danced around and this is the email and this is the 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 soundtrack album to that um yeah it's kind of odd in places but you've got some great performances from uh, Paul Buchanan, Nana Cherry, Elizabeth Fraser, the late great Richie Havens is on here um it's you know six of one half a dozen the other but it's you know, at the time it was the only Gable we were getting, so I like it. And uh, you know, Downside Up is 
is a great track from this he says trying to open it out yeah <laughs> downside up father son makes its appearance on this album too the tower eight people again so good that gabriel did actually perform that one live this is the special edition with the bonus disc and little book inside it another soundtrack album long walk home um it's a great film uh kenneth branner's in it i don't remember who, who directed it but um there's lots of bits from up and other songs in here like i say blue sky oh, oh, oh that theme runs throughout this soundtrack it's a good soundtrack but a, a better film uh oh gold is another live album secret world live oh yeah not that impressed with it because i didn't think that that tour was that good uh, then we come to i haven't i haven't got the the tangible one uh, scratch my back should have been called scratch my balls if you want to hear a load of turgy guff with string accompaniment buy it it's it's really is a waste of time but what was more interesting is when he did um new blood where he did his own songs now the album is a bit boring but the blu-ray slash dvd of the live show is fantastic because when you hear it and see it in a live context with surround sound and that extra you know clarity the, you know it needs a surround sound for the strings it really works um i recommend this you can see me unboxing it there's a video out there somewhere in the list where you can see me unboxing this well worth it for about 30, 30 quid i think this was and it's well worth it because you get the blu-ray and the studio recordings and the live recordings as well so i oh, like that one uh and then he said I'm trying to think what he's doing should we should we go on now? should we do some dvds now as well right Ooh. I'm trying to get this chronologically yeah we've got secret world live there's that that's the old one but then there's the newer version on blu-ray they're slightly different but slightly the same um this tour left me cold. I saw it at was Court and I got incredibly bored by it. It's better seeing it in this thing. I still prefer his growing up tour to this. Um, you know, there you go. Um, what else we got? Ah, this is a good one. Peter Gabriel, play the videos. Now this is is this is well worth getting because you get all the um, all the hits and all the videos, including Sledgehammer, of course, and Don't Give Up. And shaking the tree and digging in the dirt and Barry Williams show and all, all that kind of stuff. But they're all there's a 5.1 surround sound mix of the tracks as well, which is pretty cool. Um, so it's well worth investigating, and there's loads of extra stuff on it, and I I, I really like it. Very good, very good. Uh, then we come to his growing up tour, that one. I uh, saw that one at uh, where was it? Wembley Arena. Pretty cool stuff. I was in the foot. I think it was in the front row actually, which was pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, I really like that tour. And the video is really cool as well. And then you have uh, growing up on tour documentary with the making the tour with the family, and that's that's quite nice. It's quite an intimate portrait of the band and the family and everybody. You know, now Mr. Gabriel, you know, gets on, and that, that's pretty cool. And then they did a, a follow up to that, which is called um, Still Growing Up, Live and Unwrapped. Um, which is kind of all the bits that they didn't play on the growing up tour um, it's all right you know it's not essential but if you're a Gabriel fan it's essential because you want to see him do his thing uh, and I think I think that's that's everything I think well, that's everything I've got anyway so that's that uh, in terms of you, the easy to buy guide you're all going to disagree with me so I don't care um, I'd actually buy I'd actually buy Hit the compilation album, yeah I really would I'd buy I'd buy that strong the straight off, and then pick up the albums, because again with Gabriel his albums are a little, some can, can be a little bit difficult to get into, you know especially if you like Games Without Frontiers or Sledgehammer, you know each album is slightly different. I mean if you compare Peter Gabriel one to Peter Gabriel two to Peter Gabriel two to Peter Gabriel three, to, they're each they're each very different stylistically. So that's why I recommend that's why I recommend uh, the greatest uh, greatest hits album first, and then check out Peter Gabriel two, Peter Gabriel three. So of course, us and. Um, I think that's about it really um the others are all you know things that you need to check out uh, and that's that 
hopefully this has been a a satisfying glimpse of the Peter Gable back catalogue. Um, yeah. I keep thinking I've forgotten something. Nope. Oh well. That's that. My name's been Darren Locke. I've been giving you a primer on Peter Gable. That bloke who used to be in that there Genesis. You know, the fella who used to dress up as a cauliflower. Yeah? No? And hopefully this has been informative and entertaining and, and that. And there's only one more thing to say. And that is... Ta-ta! <laughs>